let me introduce you to the WebDriver PyDai. So WebDriver PyDai is a new cross-browser automation protocol. It's a bi-directional protocol for the browser automation. So WebDriver PyDai is a new protocol that is an that serves as an extension for the WebDriver Classic. So in this talk, what we'll do, uh, we'll explore the reasons behind the introduction of the WebDriver PyDai. So why it is, it is introduced and what are the limitations with the WebDriver Classic and what are the limitations with the uh, CDP protocol we'll be able to see. And also we'll also see how we can use WebDriver PyDai with the automation tools like Selenium and WebDriver Ivo. Yeah, like coming to the agenda. So firstly, we'll discuss about the evolution of WebDriver Classic. And later, we will also like you know differentiate uh, dif between the WebDriver Classic and the CDP. So in order to understand WebDriver by Dai, uh, these two are most important because once you get the clear understanding uh, with the limitations and the differences, then we'll go with the WebDriver by Dai introduction. And later, we'll go with the advantages of the WebDriver by Dai because it is a new protocol. It has to be some there, there, there has to be some advantages with it, right? And later, we'll go with the current by Dai state. So how far it is implemented because WebDriver by Dai is not available in all test automation tools. It is still under development. And also we can see uh, how we can implement with Selenium and WebDriver IO because WebDriver by Dai, few parts of the WebDriver by Dai is already implemented and already available in the browser vendors. So, um, yeah. So coming to the WebDriver Classic, um, I can say, uh, Birth of test automation actually starts with the start started with the Selenium RC. With the Selenium RC, we have started automating uh, the browser, right? So Selenium RC was introduced in the 2004, and it was the most widely and popular, uh, widely used automation tool in that year. And later, with the introduction of the WebDriver by Dai, it has become more popular because, sorry, uh, with the introduction of WebDriver, I can say, because WebDriver was more popular as it was directly communicating with the uh, browser using the uh, browser API or the JSON web protocol. So in the year of 2009, what happened is Selenium RC and the web driver both got merged and they became a single house power automation tool called Selenium web driver. And Selenium web driver was more popular and in the year of 2018, it, it has become the browser standard. That means all browser vendors are using the web driver, uh, like in a web driver protocol to automate their test cases, like, you know, uh, that's why there is a uh, Chrome driver and Gecko driver and browser drivers uh, follow the web driver standard now. So even Selenium follows the web driver standard now. So uh, there are a lot of tools in the market actually, but uh, we will see you now what are the automation tools in the market that actually uses web driver classic. So first one is the popular tool, Selenium web driver. So Selenium web driver is a pure implementation of the web driver classic. And the another tool is WebDriver IVO. So WebDriver IVO is also another tool which is written in JavaScript slash TypeScript. So that also uses a WebDriver Classic API to automate the browser. And the third tool is the APM. So you all know APM is the popular tool to automate a, a, a mobile devices. And it also follows the WebDriver Classic API. And the Nightwatch. So Nightwatch is uh, also like you know, it is built on top of Selenium only, but it is also most popular tool that uses WebDriver Classic. So these are the high level four automation tools in the market that uses WebDriver Classic in the behind or WebDriver API in the behind. So um, WebDriver is not only the protocol that is used for the browser automation, right? Because as the web development evolved from time to time, what happened is there was a demand to write test cases in JavaScript. So that comes with the, the dot, uh, another two new protocols that we can use to automate the browser. First one is the web API and second one is the CDP. So now we'll discuss the tools that actually uses web API for the automation purpose, that is Cypress. So you all know Cypress is the popular tool in the market. So Cypress uses web API directly, like you know, it injects JavaScript into the browser directly in, uh, in the browser, uh, browser console, right? So for example, let me take a simple button in here, like, you know, uh, a click me button. So let me, uh, let me show you how actually Selenium tries to click on and how Cypress tries to click on and how we can simulate the click event using web, uh, API, uh, web API. So if you ask me, Selenium, what, that, what it does is, when you try to perform uh, a click operation using Selenium, first Selenium hovers the mouse pointer onto the button. That means it moves the mouse pointer and it simulates the commands called mouse pressed and mouse clicked. So it is the like, high level commands that uh, Selenium or WebDriver API uses. So first it moves the mouse pointer and simulates the click event. But that is not the same thing that, you, that like, you know, Cypress 
does Cypress does in a different way. So, for example, if you go to the DevTools console, you can use the Web API to simulate the click action in here. So there is a deep, and there is a big difference like in you know, how Selenium uh, Selenium simulates the click action and how Web API simulates the click action in here. So Cypress is the one tool that uses Web API to automate the browser. So there is also one more protocol called a CDP. So CDP stands for Chrome Dev Tools. So the another tool that uses CDP is Puppeteer. So Puppeteer is the main tool that uses pure CDP in the backend. And CDP stands for Chrome Dev Tools Protocol. That means it only works for the Chromium-based browsers. And again, we will take one click me button in here. We'll try to do the same click action or simulate the click action using the CDP. So now you know how Selenium does the click action. It moves the mouse pointer and clicks it. And Web API has its own way. But coming to the CDP, there is the CDP commands executes in the backend. So first command is uh, it actually searches for the element using the query. And second, once the element is found out, like you know, uh, it stores in the search ID. And third, it dispatches the mouse event called mouse pressed. And again, on once it is pressed, it dispatches the another event called mouse release. So these are the exact commands that CDP executes in the backend. Okay, so this is how actually CDP automation tools perform click action on a button. So now we have to see, like, you know, there, there are a lot of tools, uh, three different protocols. WebDriver and um, Web API and CDP and these three different tools work in a different way in their implementation. Okay, so now what we'll do is now um, move aside with the like you know keep aside the uh, Web API. We'll now differentiate with the classic WebDriver and the CDP. So first one is classic WebDriver is a standard protocol. That means it is the uh, W3C protocol that is implemented by the all uh, browser vendors. And coming to the CDP, it only supports in the Chromium-based browsers. Okay. And second thing is WebDriver Classic actually communicates via HTTP requests. So there are a few limitations with the HTTP requests. We'll come again uh, on that. But uh, WebDriver Classic, as you all know, Selenium actually communicates via HTTP. But CDP in, in another way, like you know, it communicates with the WebSocket. So there are a lot of advantages communicating via WebSocket, and CDP does that. And Selenium actually, uh, like you know, classic web browser does not support low level controls. So, low level controls are nothing but um, access to the dev tools, uh, browser dev tools, or like you know, JS errors or console logs in the dev tools, network events in the dev tools. But if you see the CDP, CDP actually designed to access like you know, dev tools protocol. Like you know, it supports all the low level controls of the browser. But coming to the limitations, so what are the actual limitations with the web browser classic? First one is that it is the synchronous in nature. So if you see the Selenium web driver commands are generally synchronous, and that means they actually wait for response to, before proceeding with the next command. This is why Selenium is a bit slow because it needs to wait until the response to, to hear the response from the browser because it is unidirectional and uh, kind of. And second thing is it has limited low level dev tools controls. So Selenium uh, web driver classic is only designed to automate the web UI, but it does not have access to the dev tools. Like, you know, this is the most requested feature for most of the people, but yeah, we'll come in, we are coming to that. So the third limitation with the WebDriver Classic is the unidirectional. So as I said, WebDriver is a bit slow because of it's unidirectional. It is not bidirectional. Unidirectional, what happens is, for example, if you have an element in the page, and if you want to check if that element is visible or like, you know, it is clickable, what you need to do is you actually pull for that element multiple times. So as it is unidirectional, for every few seconds, you'll be polling for that, uh, like an availability of the element. So for every request, it takes time. So this is where actually Selenium web driver is a bit slow. Now coming to the limitations of the CDP. So now we have seen the uh, web driver classic limitations and now with the CDP limitations, first one is the browser compatibility. So if you clearly see CDP stands for Chrome Devtools protocol. So it is only strictly works for like, it purely works for the Chromium based browsers. So you can ask, like, you know, they, it also supports for Firefox or other dev tools. Yes, it supports, but not completely. But it is fully supported for the Chromium-based browsers, but partially supported, I can say, for the other browsers. And second thing is version dependency. So this is the main problem with the CDP. So for every Chrome release, there will be CDP release. And for different CDP releases, there will be few methods deprecated or few features will be modified. So this affects the backward compatibility. So this is the same thing we have done in the Selenium. Uh, 
Selenium also, like you know, Selenium allows you to uh, execute the CDP commands, and you need to pin the CDP version or the browser version before if you want to use the CDP commands. So these are the limitations with the Selenium WebDriver and also with the CDP. So uh, to overcome these limitations, actually, there is a new protocol introduced that is called a WebDriver BiDi. So WebDriver BiDi actually is a combination of two things, a WebDriver Classic and the CDP, the power of WebDriver Classic and the CDP. So as it is a new protocol, you can ask, um, is it different from the WebDriver Classic and CDP? No, WebDriver, uh, WebDriver BiDi is implemented on top of WebDriver Classic only. So based on how you want to use it in the code, you can actually start the WebDriver BiDi connection or you can close the WebDriver BiDi connection. So with the new protocol, actually there will be few advantages. So we'll see the advantages of the WebDriver BiDi. So first one is the fast and bidirectional communication. So now you can see this is the limitation with the WebDriver Classic. So WebDriver Classic is unidirectional. Now WebDriver BiDi will be the bidirectional communication. So with the bidirectional communication, you can actually know what is happening at the browser end. So if something happens at the browser end, WebDriver BiDi can inform you or it can send you the real-time updates. So you can use the real-time updates to debug your test cases or debug your application. And second thing is WebDriver BiDi provides you access to the low-level control. So it is also like, you know, uh, it was a limitation with the WebDriver Classic. WebDriver Classic does not have access to the low level controls. Now WebDriver BiDi, with the WebDriver BiDi, now we can have the power of CDP using within the WebDriver, right? So now we can use, you can test the browser UI and also you can get the information from the dev tools. How cool is it? So third one is the cross browser support. So this is the limitations from the CDP you can see. So CDP stands for Chrome Utils Protocol. It is only purely supported for the Chromium based browsers. Now, WebDriver BiDi is a WPC specification. That means all browser vendors are actually implementing the WebDriver BiDi. So it will be the same as the WebDriver protocol. So once you write test cases in one for one browser, it will be the same thing or the same behavior in the other browser too. And so we are discussing about the low-level controls, right? So what are the actual low-level controls that WebDriver BiDi uh, provides to you? First one is the listening to the JS servers. So uh, WebDriver BiDi actually allows you to listen JS service in the console, or if the application console, if application has any errors in the console, WebDriver BiDi actually allows you to uh, fetch it, and you can use them for the debugging purpose. And the second thing is listening to the console logs. So WebDriver BiDi enables real-time capturing of the console logs. So if there are any console logs uh, in the DevTools console, you can actually fetch it and use for the debugging. And the third thing is the DOM mutation. DOM mutation is a concept where um, there, will be, there will be changes to the DOM tree if there is any uh, event is executed in the DOM. Like, you know, so you can also observe and uh, listen to the DOM mutation uh, with using the WebDriver BiDi and network interception. So network interception is a concept that allows you to intercept network requests and responses. So you can also modify requests and also mock the request. So that helps the developers to actually like you know, test more on the network uh, actions but in the dev tools. So WebDriver actually allows you, WebDriver BiDi actually allows you to do that. So currently uh, the WebDriver BiDi implementation, listening to the JS service and listening to the console logs is implemented and that is also available in the test automation tools in Selenium and WebDriver IBO. DOM mutation and the network interception are in progress and in the future we will be implementing that too. So what is the current implementation status of the WebDriver BiDi? So, uh, now this is the uh, like you know uh, real time update from uh, from the web platform test cases. So web platform test cases, what it uh, ensures is ensures is uh, once the browser vendors implement a feature, uh, that feature will be having the same behavior in the other, uh, other browsers too. So once you once you write a feature, you test it. Uh, the browser vendors test it using uh, for the web browser by die, so that the feature has the same behavior in the other test cases too. So here you can see the modules, um, browser can, browsing context errors and uh, input log network and script. So you can see for the network, it is still not yet implemented in the Chromium and it is available in the Firefox. So there is a difference between uh, for the implementation for the Chromium and other, like, you know, other browser vendors, different browser vendors, but whoever implements it first, then we can able to test it and we can able to implement it. So this is the real time update. So red one shows it is not yet implemented. Green one shows it is implemented. And, uh,